One of the most popular leisure time activities practiced in the United States each year is recreational swimming. It has been estimated that up to 100 million people use public and private beaches across the country. The quality of the water at these beaches is usually measured with bacteriological enumeration methods for fecal coliforms or total coliforms. Fecal coliforms are, by far, the most popular of the two indicators, and they are used by more than 95% of states and territories of the United States. This bacterial indicator was first recommended by the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency in its 1972 publication entitled Water Quality Criteria. And in the 1976 Red Book. The criterion for recreational surface waters states that the geometric mean of five water samples taken in any 30-day period shall not exceed 200 fecal coliforms per 100 milliliters. It also states that an upper limit of 400 fecal coliforms per 100 milliliters or more would be accepted 10% of the time. This guideline was first proposed in 1968 by the National Technical Advisory Committee, which had been commissioned by the Federal Water Pollution Control Administration. The National Technical Advisory Committee developed the current guideline using the results of three studies conducted by the United States Public Health Service at three sites, Lake Michigan at Chicago, the Ohio River at Dayton, Kentucky, and Long Island Sound at Mamarnock in New Rochelle, New York. The initial United States Public Health Service bathing beach studies were carried out using total coliforms to measure the water quality. In 1968, the National Technical Advisory Committee proposed substituting fecal coliforms for total coliforms because it was felt that fecal coliforms, a thermotolerant subgroup of total coliforms, were a more fecal-specific indicator. This was accomplished by determining the ratio of fecal coliforms to total coliforms in water samples taken from the Ohio River near where the original bathing beach studies had been conducted. It was found that fecal coliforms comprised about 18% of the total coliforms, and this ratio was used to establish the fecal coliform density at which swimming-associated gastrointestinal illness was detected. Fecal coliforms were criticized as an indicator of fecal contamination almost from the very day that they were proposed as a measure of water quality for recreational waters. There were those who thought that the use of a ratio of fecal coliforms to total coliforms observed on the Ohio River may not have national application. Other investigators have shown that certain types of coliforms reacted as fecal coliforms even though their source was not the gastrointestinal tract of warm-blooded animals. These criticisms of the indicator organism used to monitor the quality of recreational waters and many documented shortcomings of the health effects data used to establish the current bacteriological standard led the United States Environmental Protection Agency to initiate a series of epidemiological microbiological studies to determine if there was a relationship between swimming associated health effects and the quality of the bathing water as measured using a bacterial indicator system. Microbiologists of EPA's Health Effects Research Laboratory developed a number of bacterial enumeration procedures for potential water quality indicator bacteria such as E. coli, Enterococci, Klebsiella, Pseudomonas aeruginosa, Vibrio parahemolyticus, Clostridium perfringens spores, and Aeromonas hydrophila. Not all of these potential indicators were necessarily to be used to measure fecal contamination. Bacteria such as Vibrio parahemolyticus, an organism usually found in marine water, and Aeromonas hydrophila, a freshwater bacterium, are known to be very sensitive to the presence of nutrient pollution, especially the type of pollution discharged from domestic sewage treatment plants into fresh or marine receiving waters. Both of these bacterial species are known to reach high densities in their respective environments in the presence of organic carbon and nitrogenous waste from sewage treatment plants. The results of the 10-year EPA recreational water quality study indicated that two bacterial indicators of water quality, enterococci and E. coli, showed a strong functional relationship to swimming-associated gastroenteritis. The enterococcus group was directly related to swimming-associated gastroenteritis in both marine and freshwater swimmers, whereas E. coli proved to be functional only in freshwater environments. 
Both of these indicators of water quality have been recommended by the Environmental Protection Agency as prime bacterial water quality indicators to be used for monitoring recreational waters. The enterococci should not be confused with the fecal streptococci. Fecal streptococci are a group of gram-positive organisms that are characterized by their ability to grow on an agar medium, which contains a high concentration of bile salts. To hydrolyze esculin, a glucoside, to deaminate arginine, and to grow at 45 degrees centigrade. They are also catalase negative. This bacterial group is found in the feces of warm-blooded animals, and it has been used as a water quality indicator for many years. A number of species make up the fecal streptococcus group. Among them, Streptococcus faecalis, Streptococcus facium, Streptococcus avium, Streptococcus bovis, and Streptococcus equinus. The enterococci are a subgroup of the fecal streptococci. They are characterized by their ability to grow in a broth medium containing 6.5% sodium chloride and by their ability to grow in a broth medium incubated at 45 degrees C. This group of organisms also ferments mannitol. The enterococci group is usually comprised of three species, Streptococcus faecalis, Streptococcus facium, and Streptococcus avium. Enterococci are found in the feces of most warm-blooded animals. Enterococci were once thought to be more human-specific than the fecal streptococcus group, but this has since been shown to be untrue because this group has been isolated from wild and domestic animals or birds. E. coli is a gram-negative bacillus. It is non-spore-forming, it has peritricious flagella, and E. coli is a member of both the total coliform and fecal coliform groups. As such, it has the major characteristic used to segregate these two groups from other gram-negative bacteria found in aquatic environments. That is, it has the ability to ferment lactose, which results in the production of acid and gas at both 35 degrees C and 44.5 degrees C. Other biochemical reactions that are characteristic of E. coli are its ability to hydrolyze tryptophan to indole, an umbiliferal beta deglucuronide to glucuronic acid and umbiliferal, the latter of which fluoresces strongly in the unconjugated state. The two traits that E. coli does not possess, but which frequently are used to separate E. coli from other coliforms, are its lack of ability to hydrolyze urea or to utilize sodium citrate as a sole source of carbon for growth. The natural habitat of E. coli is the gastrointestinal tract of warm-blooded animals. It is not known to grow in natural environments under ordinary circumstances, and therefore, it has been the favored bacterial indicator of fecal contamination for many years. The EPA Health Effects Research Laboratory has developed special methods for enumerating E. coli and enterococci. Membrane filtration technology was chosen to develop the methods because of its inherent precision and because of the potential for confirming colonies directly on the membrane. The steps involved in performing both methods will be described in turn. Water samples should be collected using the techniques described in the standard methods for the examination of water and wastewater. The samples should be maintained on ice until they are ready for examination. The first method we will demonstrate is the one for enumerating E. coli. The formulation of the medium used for enumerating E. coli is shown in this table. Lactose is the main carbon source in the medium, and protease peptone provides a source of nitrogen. Growth factors are provided by yeast extract. Sodium dodecyl sulfate and sodium deoxycholate are included in the medium to inhibit gram-positive bacteria. Two dyes, bromcresol purple and bromphenol red, are used to intensify the color reaction under acid conditions. The name of the MTEC procedure is derived from the major characteristic of E. coli that is used to select for this organism in water samples, and that is its ability to grow at an elevated temperature, namely 44.5 degrees C. Thus, the TEC and the TEC designation stands for thermotolerant E. coli and the lowercase m indicates that the method is a membrane filter technique. E. coli colonies are confirmed in place by transferring the membrane from the primary medium to urea substrate medium. 
This table shows the formulation of the test solution. The reagent is usually made up in 100 milliliter quantities each week. If sterile distilled water is used, the solution will remain usable for at least one week if stored at refrigerator temperature. The solution is prepared by adding two grams of urea and 10 milligrams of phenol red dye to 100 milliliters of sterile distilled water. The pH is adjusted to approximately 4.5 with one normal NaOH. At this pH, the urease reagent should be a straw yellow color. If during storage the reagent color becomes pink, it should be discarded and a fresh solution should be prepared. Very briefly, as noted in this flowchart, a water sample is passed through a 0.45 micron pore size membrane and the membrane is then placed on the surface of the MTech medium. The medium is then placed in a 35 degree C incubator for two hours before being transferred to an incubator or water bath set at 44.5 degrees C. After 18 to 22 hours incubation, the MTech plate is removed and the colonies are prepared for counting. This is done by transferring the membrane from the surface of the medium to a filter pad that has been saturated with urea substrate solution. The colony containing membrane is incubated at room temperature for approximately 20 minutes, after which the colonies are ready for counting. Counting is usually performed with the aid of a two to 10 times magnifying lens. All those colonies whose color is yellow to yellow green are counted as E. coli. Colonies that are pink or red or purple are non-E. coli colonies that have survived the selective differential procedure. A more detailed and instructive description of the method is given next. Note that two inch media plates are poured in the conventional manner with about four to five milliliters. The first step in the procedure is to properly label the plates on which the membrane will be applied. The next step is to remove the filter adapters from the ultraviolet sterilizer apparatus and place them in the filter manifold. After the filter adapters are properly seated in the manifold, carefully place a 0.45 micron pore size membrane on the flat centered glass lower portion of the filter funnel. Before removing a filter from its sterile packet, Carefully dip the tips of forceps in 95% alcohol, then pass only the tips through a flame. Allow the flame to burn out before picking up a membrane. After placing the membrane, carefully set the upper part of the filter funnel in place and secure it with a clamp. Now the filter funnel is ready to receive a sample. The sample should be thoroughly shaken before it is filtered. If the sample volume to be filtered is 20 milliliters or less, it is recommended that 25 to 30 milliliters of sterile buffer should be added to the funnel before the sample is added. This precaution ensures that any bacteria in a small sample will be impacted randomly on the membrane filter. After the sample is added to the filter funnel, a vacuum is applied to the filter and the sample is drawn through the membrane. When the filtration is complete, carefully rinse the walls of the filter funnel with about 30 to 50 milliliters of sterile buffer. Subsequent to rinsing the funnel, remove the clamp and the upper portion of the filter funnel. Dip the tips of the forceps into 95% alcohol and pass them through a flame before carefully removing the membrane from the lower portion of the filter funnel adapter. Then carefully roll the membrane onto the surface of a plate containing MTech medium making certain that air bubbles are not trapped beneath the membrane. After the samples are filtered and the membranes rolled onto the medium, the plates are put into a whirl pack plastic bag, which is tightly sealed before being placed in a 35 degrees C incubator for two hours. After two hours, the plastic bag is transferred to a water bath set at 44.5 degrees C and incubated for about 22 hours. The short incubation period at 35 degrees C is required because indicator bacteria from water environments frequently are injured or stressed, and they are not able to repair and grow if they are placed immediately into a high temperature environment. This is dramatically shown in this figure, which illustrates the effect of holding a membrane filter at non-restrictive temperature before transferring the membrane and plate to 44.5 degrees C. This procedure allows the bacterial cells to repair the environmentally induced damage before being placed in an elevated temperature incubator. 
Note that the number of recoverable E. coli cells is increased by 50% after incubation for one hour at 35 degrees C before being transferred to 44.5 for 22 hours. If the membrane is held at 35 degrees C for two hours, there is a 100% increase in the number of E. coli recoverable from water samples. Although a slight increase in the recovery of E. coli can be seen after two hours incubation at 35 degrees C, it was concluded that the increase was not great enough to extend the recitation period beyond two hours, and therefore that is the time which is recommended. After the two hour recitation period, the plates are removed from the 35 degree sink incubator and transferred to a water bath maintained at 44.5 degrees C. The tightly sealed plastic bag is placed between the decks of a test tube rack or some other suitable container. The rack is then immersed in the water bath and weighted down with an object of sufficient weight to hold the rack beneath the surface of the water. The cover of the incubator is set in place and the plates are incubated for about 22 hours. After the 22-hour period, the test tube rack is removed from the water, and the plates are taken from the plastic bag and prepared for the urease substrate test. First, the lid of a plate is gently removed from the plate and placed upside down on the bench top. Then a sterile filter pad is placed in the lid of the plate. is then saturated with urease reagent. The membrane is then carefully removed from the MTech medium and rolled onto the substrate saturated pad. The membrane is allowed to incubate at room temperature for about 15 minutes. After this short incubation period, the colonies on the membrane are ready to be counted. Ideally, only plates with more than 20 or less than 80 colonies should be counted. The lower limit of 20 colonies is suggested so that the inherent sampling error associated with counting colonies on a plate will be minimized. The upper limit is suggested because when more than 80 E. coli colonies are counted, there is a tendency to overestimate the true number of colonies and, therefore, an undesirable error is introduced. E. coli colonies are yellow or greenish yellow in color. They are usually one half to one and one half millimeters in diameter. After the 22 hour incubation period, but before the urease substrate test, the colonies appear as shown in this picture. The yellow or greenish yellow colonies are those that hydrolyzed lactose at 44.5 degrees C and formed an acid, which caused the dyes incorporated in the medium to exhibit the yellow color. Those colonies that grew but failed to break down the lactose are purple in color. After the same membrane is incubated on the urease substrate for 15 minutes, the colonies appear as shown in this next picture. E. coli cannot hydrolyze urea and, therefore, the E. coli colonies remain yellow. The other non-E. coli colonies are those coliforms that break down lactose and are able to hydrolyze urea to form carbon dioxide and ammonia. The ammonia causes the colonies to become alkaline and change the colony color from yellow to red or purple. Therefore, only the yellow to greenish yellow colonies are counted as E. coli. The performance characteristics of the MTech medium can be seen in the next two tables. The accuracy of the method was tested by injuring multiple laboratory cultures by holding them in seawater or freshwater overnight, and then the cultures were enumerated on a non-selective medium such as plate count agar and on MTech medium. The number of E. coli colonies recovered on MTech medium as a percentage of the number of colonies recovered on the non-selective medium is shown in the table. The relative accuracy of the MTEC medium is about 92% in freshwater and about 105% in seawater. The recovery of greater than 100% resulted because of the natural variation that occurs when bacteria from water samples are counted. The specificity 
or the ability of the method to isolate the organism in question and no others is shown in the next table. The total number of colonies on an MTEC plate resulting from a variety of water samples is comprised on the average of about 85% E. coli colonies and about 15% non-E. coli colonies. About 9% of the yellow E. coli colonies are not E. coli. In effect, they are false positive colonies. Only about 1% of the non-E. coli colonies were found to be E. coli, or false negative colonies. The second method we are going to describe is one that uses two media, a primary isolation, ME medium, and a substrate medium for confirmation of the colonies in place. The substrate medium is designated EIA medium because its three main ingredients are esculin, iron, and agar. The E in ME medium indicates that it is for enterococci, and the lowercase m identifies it as a membrane filter medium. The formulation for the two media are shown in this table. Peptone is included in the medium as a source of carbon and nitrogen, and yeast extract provides growth factors. The esculin, which is hydrolyzed to coumarin and glucose by enterococci, provides a very limited source of carbon to that group of organisms. The sodium chloride, nalodixic acid, actadione, and sodium azide are included to inhibit non-enterococci bacteria and fungi. The triphenyl tetrazoleum chloride is used to impart an intense red color to the colonies. The EIA substrate medium contains only three ingredients, esculin, ferric citrate, and agar. The esculin component is included in the medium as a substrate which is hydrolyzed to coumarin and glucose by the target organism, the enterococci. The iron from the ferric citrate combines with the free coumarin molecules to form a black precipitate which is easily visualized on the underside of a membrane. This flowchart of the ME procedure is shown to give an indication of the general steps required to enumerate enterococci. The water samples are treated in the same manner as recommended for the E. coli procedure. After determining the appropriate volumes of sample to be filtered and thoroughly mixing the sample, an appropriate portion is passed through the membrane. The membrane is applied to the ME medium and the plate is incubated at 41 degrees C for 48 hours. Following the primary incubation period, the membrane is removed from the ME plate and placed on the surface of the EIA substrate medium. The EIA plate is then incubated for 20 to 30 minutes in a 41 degree C incubator. After this short incubation period, the underside of the membrane is examined for a black precipitate which surrounds a dark red underside of a colony. The colonies showing the precipitate belong to the enterococci group. We will now demonstrate exactly how the method is performed. As with the E. coli method, the first step is to remove the filter funnel base from the UV sterilizer box and securely place them in the filter manifold. Next, the forceps are dipped into the alcohol and quickly passed through a flame to sterilize the tips. A membrane is carefully removed from its sterile pack and placed on the filter funnel base. Next, the filter funnel is removed from the UV sterilizer box and carefully placed on top of the filter and securely clamped. Before filtering small volume samples, add about 20 to 40 milliliters of sterile buffer to the filter funnel. Then add the measured amount of water sample and apply a vacuum to the filter. After the sample has completely passed through the membrane, rinse the sides of the funnel with buffer once or twice to remove any bacteria that may have adhered to the sides of the funnel. After rinsing, remove the clamp and then the filter funnel. Aseptically remove the membrane from the filter funnel base with flame sterilized forceps and carefully roll the membrane onto the surface of the ME medium, making sure that no air bubbles are trapped beneath the membrane. Place the lids on the membrane filter plates and then place them in a 41 degree C incubator. After 48 hours, remove the plates from the incubator. Next, Remove the membrane from the ME medium and carefully roll the membrane onto the surface of the EIA medium. If the EIA plates have been refrigerated, they should be allowed to reach room temperature before using them. Again, 
make sure no air bubbles are trapped beneath the surface of the medium. The EIA plates are then placed in the 41 degree C incubator for a period of 20 to 30 minutes. After this short period, the plates are removed from the incubator and are ready for counting. The colonies are counted with the aid of an illuminated lens with a 2 to 10 times magnification. Counting is accomplished by visualizing the underside of the membrane through the EIA medium. The underside of those dark red colonies that show a black precipitate halo are considered to be enterococci. Some still pictures will help us to visualize the colonies in more detail. This first picture shows a membrane on ME medium after 48 hours incubation at 41 degrees C. Please note the index mark that will be a point of reference for subsequent pictures and the deep red color of all the colonies. This next picture is of the same membrane viewed from the underside after it has been transferred to the EIA substrate medium and before it has been incubated at 41 degrees C for 20 to 30 minutes. This third picture is again the underside of the membrane, only after the plate has been incubated for 20 to 30 minutes at 41 degrees C. Note the dark black precipitate surrounding the dark red underside of the enterococci colonies. The performance characteristics for the ME medium's accuracy and specificity are shown in the next two tables. The accuracy of the medium was tested with several known species of streptococci that had been artificially stressed by being held in seawater at 5 degrees C for 3 to 9 days. The recovery values were calculated by determining what percentage of cells recovered on a non-selective medium, such as brain heart infusion agar, were recovered by the ME medium. This table clearly shows that enterococci species, Streptococcus faecalis and Streptococcus facium, are recovered very efficiently, even after being stressed for up to nine days. The non-enterococci species, on the other hand, were not recoverable after momentary contact with the seawater. The average percent recovery of the enterococci species was about 100%. The specificity of the ME medium is shown in this next table. Water samples from various marine environments were assayed and the enterococci and non-enterococci colonies were examined to determine if they were indeed what the in situ, that is in place confirmation test, indicated they were. Over 1900 typical colonies were examined and only about 190 or 10 percent were shown to be something other than members of the enterococci group. 257 colonies that did not confirm as enterococci species were also examined to verify they were not enterococci. Only 10% of the colonies were found to be enterococci. Thus, the false positive and false negative rate on the colony designations from ME medium were the same, that is, about 10%. These are very acceptable rates for counting colonies on membrane filters and the rates indicate that the ME method is very accurate and specific. This has been a description of the laboratory techniques for E. coli and enterococci as described in test methods for E. coli and enterococci and used for ambient water quality for bacteria, 1986.